Coming up on Techzilla, dump the bloatware that came with your new PC, a hard drive I can run my truck over, dumping cable for 3G, electric shock 3D, backing up your Blu-rays, a better charger for your batteries, the new releases for the week of February 15, 2011, and quite a bit more. So make sure the chamber is clear and lock that puppy down, because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by GoToAssist Express. Support smarter with GoToAssist Express, Squarespace, and Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla to get a free trial membership. I'm Patrick Norton. Hey, and I'm Robert Heron. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Hey, whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best pastrami on the West Coast, We've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll track down somebody that does. Hey, did, did somebody say WebOS? Uh, WebOS. I'm hearing like things, but. Palm purchased by HP. Oh. HP, by the way, revealed a new tablet, the touchpad today, running WebOS, 9.7 inch, 10 by 7 screen, a wee little 1.3 megapixel camera, 16 or 32 gigabytes of memory or storage, I should say, powered by a dual core 1.2 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. And yes, it looks like an iPod, iPod, iPad, just like many other Slate tablet thingies. WebOS looks really good on a tablet, and as Robert Scoble pointed out, the use of flash video and games in HP's demo made, quote, Apple's anti-flash stance look lamer. WebOS, and thus the touchpad, is a bit short on apps, but so were Android and iOS when they launched. You can expect HP's shiny new toy to hit this summer, and absolutely no information on pricing was revealed. Hey, speaking hey. of flash... Flash 10.2 is here. It brings native, well, custom mouse cursors, basically hardware accelerated cursors with it. And that's not nearly as interesting as support for full screen mode and multiple monitors. Yeah! yeah. Multi-touch gesturing, better mobile support, or sub-pixel text rendering, if you'd like to say it that way. And we can't wait to see the website implementation, basically the new stage video API. Uh, essentially, it's a new way of rendering video objects in Flash that promises to bring GPU acceleration to the entire video pipeline. If the website modifies their Flash player to take advantage of stage video. It's there. It's there. Take advantage. Be kind to the lesser video hardware that's out there and basically bring in that support for it, which is Think great. 85% reduction in CPU utilization. And ponies! Ponies! <laughs> Speaking of ponies! At Peeb tweeted in, saw this and thought of you. There's a link. And, and then Maybe a good Techzilla test subject? Quote, tech that can take a hit. The link, by the way, that Peep said in was to a Crunchgear article that showed an IO safe drive that had been hit by a shotgun blast. Check that out. IO safe's rugged portable, that's the name of the drive you're looking at, runs 149 bucks and promises, and I quote, crush protection for up to five thousand pounds or at least one wheel on my truck drop protection up to 20 feet immersion protection up to 30 feet for three days usb 3.0 2.0 and firewire data recovery service up to five grand quote the world's best warranty unquote and it works with macs and pcs Daddy nice. Wants. nice that's a toddler proof drive people <laughs> at least if he doesn't lose it hey and from the isn't that depressing department we got a lovely Valentine's Day press release from Logitech about its global remote control trend study. Now, as you plan your Valentine's Day coverage, I wanted to share research from Logitech that found more than one third of Americans would rather spend the night with their remote control than with the sweetheart. What? Specifically, 36% of people admitted they would rather they would rather give up sex for a month than their remote control. Even in France, a country well known for romance, nearly one in five or 18% of people would rather cuddle up in bed with a remote each night. I, I, this is just hurting my soul. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the study investigated, uh, quote, investigated the living room habits of about 7,000 people in the U.S. and around the world, and the remote wins over... Loveys. Loveys. I just... I just the remote. I am speechless. This is... This is shocking. Shocking. It's wrong, people. It, it, wrong is another word for I can it. understand liking a good remote, but... They would rather give up sex for a month than give up the remote control, which also might say how lazy people are. I think I went two or three days this week without turning my TV on once. And that felt kind of nice. You know, if I lose the remote for my television, I can't turn it on. I have about 50 remotes, so there's always another one I can just <laughs> pick up. So, At MD Using Tweets in, at Patrick Norton, you know an affordable all 3G internet service provider? Comcast is killing me with expense and outages. Pound ISP help. Um, okay, we're going to talk about 
fixing your cable <laughs> modem in a second. But let's let's talk about 3G speeds first. PC Bag did an amazing uh, study, the fastest mobile network 2010. It was a roundup. They did thousands of tests all over the United States. They took like a whole bunch of cities and a whole bunch of places in those cities. AT&T, the fastest 3G network out there, averaged 1.79 megabits per second download. Max was 2.75 megabit per second. Sprint's 4G, which is pretty fast, do you think? No, 2.11 megabits per second average, and the, the best score they hit was 3.14 megabits per second downloading. This isn't cable speed, dude. This is DSL, okay? If you are going to move to 3G, you're getting DSL speeds. And you're going to get a cap for 3G modems, five gigabytes max for the month is standard. That's like three movies on iTunes or, or Netflix if they're HD. What, it's not unlimited? Well, 4G is unlimited in many cases. Oh, okay. For example, my Sprint 4G modem in 4G mode is unlimited, but if it drops down to 3G mode, they cap it at five gigabytes. Got it. You're going to pay almost the same exact cost per month. There is no cheaper option. You're paying 60 bucks a month, or you're paying sort of a flat rate fee from, from somebody like Virgin. You might want to call Comcast, get your cable modem checked, because... I, it, I've it's, been through that. Yeah. I had a cable modem that was uh, basically every night, well, for whatever reason, I'm up at right. 2 a.m., and at 2 a.m. <laughs> every morning, the darn thing just resets. And I, oh, it has to be my router, so I replaced the router. And that actually did improve some of my performance with my internet connection, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I actually took the dang cable modem out of the equation, took it back to their office, and it turns out I had a relatively old cable modem, and they gladly handed me one that was a little more updated and a little more recent. And eventually I ended up replacing that one as well with one I owned that I knew was brand new out of the box, and I have had not a lick of trouble since. So something to consider right there. Seriously, um, it, many complaints as I may have about Comcast for professional reasons, because they bought a company I worked at and destroyed it. But, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I, I like I, I mock, but Comcast cable you may not get the bandwidth you think you should, but it it's usually extremely reliable, at least here in the Bay Area. Yeah, and I. I, I <laughs> the first thing I did before I got out of bed this morning was run the bandwidth speed test on my iPhone right. connected to my router, which is connected to Comcast cable. I, for my service, I was getting about 16 megabit, a right. little over 16 megabit down, and about almost 4 megabit up. So just give you a rough idea of what I'm paying, or yeah. what I'm getting out of my, uh, yeah, I think about 40 bucks a month, 45. 3G is a great thing if you are traveling. It is not a great thing to substitute for a cable modem for your internet access. Although, and we were talking about this before the show, if you are in anywhere other than the United States, yeah. things change. You likely have cheaper internet to your home and faster cell service as well for, right. for also less money. And it's, right. it's kind of a ridiculous situation. Being you may have country. like a you know, 80 megabyte cap if you're in Australia. Maybe. We feel your pain in Australia. The caps you guys have on data are just pathetic. It's just sad. It's painful. It hurts us. Fast internet for all. Yeah. Hey, got a question for us? Email us, techzilla at revisions3.com. We want your questions. At techzilla, at Robert Heron, at Veronica, at Patrick Norton. We want your questions. Please tweet them. Go to our Facebook page. Just send those in. Whatever you want us to talk about, send us a question. Techzilla at revisions3.com. Coming up next, glasses free 3D like you've never seen before and will probably never want to see again. But first, let's thank one of our sponsors. Squarespace, it is an amazing way to put a website on the internet. Doesn't matter if you want to get a single page that point people to your phone number, a personal portfolio, you want to do something big and professional. Doesn't matter if you can't code because Squarespace has amazing tools that will help you create a high-end website with no coding. Or if you're a coder, you can get under the hood and tweak the code to your heart's delight. 24-7 support for every user, which is very nice if you're like Robert and like to code on your website at 2 in the morning. And Squarespace just pushed a really cool new social widget for geolocation services. It'll display your most recent check-ins from Foursquare, Gowalla, Facebook Places, and it'll do it on a live Google map. Squarespace is the only web publishing platform with a native built-in tool for displaying your check-in data. The widget is totally customizable and fully integrated with Squarespace's style editor. And if you haven't seen it, Squarespace's iPhone app, awesome. You can publish your blog on the go, moderate comments, get 
get push notifications so you can go through and know that you have new comments to moderate, mark existing comments and spam, reply to comments. You get this, you can pretty much run your website from your iPhone. Some of the internet's most highly trafficked web pages powered by Squarespace, not to mention the personal pages of many of Revision 3's hosts and personalities. Mine, for example, if you can find it. <laughs> go to squarespace.com slash techzilla, get yourself a two week free trial and learn quite a bit more about what we think is a darn fine way to host a website. It's time to get our HD Nation on. By the way, another high-end projector mini roundup coming up. I wouldn't say it's no ultra high-end. This is like in the five to $6,000 range. That might sound like a lot of money, but current front projectors can go up to be pretty darn expensive. Yeah, compared and this to a, okay. is, five grand is cheap compared to a $25,000 yes. projector. I myself was just sad that I missed the Woot warehouse sell-off, whatever the heck Woot. it was. The, the Optoma HD 20, 650 bucks refurbished. That's an awesome price. Which That's is 900 bucks brand new, and yeah. for about 300, 250 dollars off. Mm -hmm. And all they probably did was swap out the lamp module and, and wipe it off and repackage it. I missed it. <laughs> That's a good deal. I want that. I can't wait to look at that. And we're requesting a similarly priced projector from JVC. Right. To go head to head against that. That'll be fun. It and will be. We've got Monoprice's, hopefully, uh, their $300 motorized remote control projection screen in for testing for a little more low end. And if you, if you consider what an 85 inch plasma screen would cost mm -hmm. you right now, that's a freaking bargain. Yeah. Bargain. 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 <laughs> Mark writes in. I've been catching up with some old Techzilla episodes and seeing all the 3D talk. Made me remember a video I saw recently, which is uh, to get a little UK, France, dissing going on, quote, what happens when you cross a Frenchman, some electrodes, some diodes, and a couple of remote controls, 3D without the glasses. Loving the show. Mark in the Manchester, UK. If, that wow. hurts, dude. Wow. That hurts, and I'm thousands of miles That's away. That's awesome. I think mm -hmm. everyone should be just walking around with those on constantly. They've solved the brightness problem from the goggles. You're, you're actually still getting only half brightness, because each eye is open. <laughs> I don't know how this is. Some craziness up there. Don't do that, Matthew. I, I just. Ben says, I have a lot of Blu ray discs that cost a bunch. How do I back up the movies to a single MP4 or H264 HD file? I do have SlySoft Any DVD HD. I want to stream them to my Xbox 360 using Tiversity. Love the show. Ben in Sylvester, Georgia. Cool. The hard part's kind of out of the way because yeah. Any DVD HD takes care of the whole encrypted Blu ray thing. Let's you look at the disc and right. see what's on there. And that's really the hard part. Now that you've gotten past that, you technically don't need to really do much other than say you could run an app like, well, you need to encode the video file that you're looking for. And one of the best tools, or one of the easiest tools out there right now that I use is Handbrake. Mm -hmm. It's free, uh, it's available on multi-platform. And what you want to point it to basically is in the stream folder on that Blu-ray disc, basically look for the largest file that typically is the main movie file. It's usually going to be about 20 to 40 plus gigs. Basically add that to Handbrake. That will be your source. And like I said, you don't have to rip it because Handbrake's taking care of the decryption. You should be able to just simply pick, the look at that file. disc and, right. and navigate the Blu-ray disc as you would. And you find that M2TS file, the big one, and mm -hmm. that will be the main movie file. You load that up and then you just encode it to whatever profile you want, selecting the profiles on the side and Handbrake. And ta-da, walk away or come. I would set it up, if you're going to do multiple files, you could set that up and set them up on the encode queue that's built into Handbrake. But otherwise, I would do this overnight because it might take upwards of an hour or more to do the whole movie. So you just pretty pretty much just click like a particular resolution or the iPad optimized version or something. Totally. Or if you want to configure it a little bit more, say you want to do like a 720 rip or something like that, you can go and specify the resolution. And mm -hmm. but they have the presets that are already available. So if you know what the platform you're going are pretty for, good. yeah, totally. And the iPad's a good one, or even the new Apple TV one because that will, I believe that automatically just sets you up for a 720p stream that is an MPEG-4 file that should stream just fine to the Xbox over Tiversity, like yeah, you're doing. For everybody up there who's raising their hands, like, why don't you create an ISO with a Blu-ray? Well, Good. that's great if you want to access the entire contents of the Blu-ray disc, including the commercials and the extras, mostly the extras, but you're not going to be able to play back the extras from a Blu-ray disc on the Xbox 360, so why not just grab the movie? Totally. And, and that'd be just one other step, and you can kind of avoid that because you've got software that just will look at the disc anyway right. and say, oh, oh, I'll take care of that getting around the encryption part. Mm -hmm. So it just makes it easier that way. That yeah. way, if you want to have a full backup of the disc, that's what you can use any, uh, any DVD HD as well for, but, but what? 
I was going to say, can an Xbox Three? Well, Tiversity would 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 actually um, could code it. But I was going to say, should. can you play 1080p video on an Xbox 360? I don't see why not. Hmm. Because they have 1080p video for download in the in the, in the marketplace. Is right. that what they call it on there? I always want to say App Store for everything now, but it's not an <laughs> App Store. It's the, the Xbox marketplace. So. I'm a PC gamer. These yeah. consoles are complicated. And besides that, whatever the transcoding that Tiversity is configured for is what it's going to end up looking like anyway. So That's make sure true. you've got that set up for whatever the highest quality you can push over your home network to that box. Or you're going to be room. really irritated. Yeah. yeah. George Bright says, since most of the world uses 50 hertz power, therefore 50 hertz or 100 hertz TVs, the 24 frames per second to 120 hertz conversion does not work. What frequency would you recommend for HD TVs in the rest of the world, i.e. not the United States? Thanks, George in the UK? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, my understanding is that 24 frames per second video, video material, it's sped up by 4% to gain that extra frame. That basically, that'll get you about one extra frame to get you to 25 frames per second. And then to take that stream, it would be effectively doubled for a display at 50 hertz. And this is assuming that you're looking at this on a progressive scan TV, like a flat panel, a modern flat panel, not like a tube TV. Uh, also, you could quadruple this, say, for display at 100 hertz and so on, because they now have 200 hertz displays, too, for the PAL CCAM countries mm -hmm. that use that broadcast standard. Now, another method would be to add an interpolated frame every 24 frames to achieve a similar result without the associated small shift in pitch you get in the audio if you simply, you know, uh, do that straight conversion from 24 to 25. Right. Like I mentioned before, you actually are, if you are speeding up the video slightly, you are <laughs> changing the pitch of the audio slightly. But yet another, and in my opinion, the most likely answer is that the TV can take that and accept that 24 frame per second video, say from your Blu-ray player, mm -hmm. and it will display it at 96 hertz using a 4X frame repeat if the TV's properly set up to do this. Mm -hmm. Now some older 60 hertz LCD flat panels I've looked at supported 24 frame input and displayed it at 48 hertz. Now, it truly, was, it was a too, it's too slow of a refresh rate to mask the flicker. At 48 hertz, you, would, you see it flickering, and it's an, it, it wasn't really watchable. But I was surprised that 60 hertz screens, we were able to do that. And right. from what I'm, telling, what I'm seeing, they're able to do that with 100 hertz screens and have them run at 96 hertz mode if you enable it properly, so you get a nice multiplier. Now, one question I have for companies like Panasonic and their basically, quote, 600 hertz subfield plasma display tech is if they adopted that 600 internal internal 600 uh, system because it factors nicely as in 24 times 25 is 600. Ooh. And that could be used worldwide in terms of, oh, you need to convert this this 24 <laughs> frame per second material or this was supposed to be displayed at 25 hertz or whatever. That number kind of works both numbers really right. well, either 24 hertz or the 25 hertz in, in terms of getting to 50 into 100. <sighs> to answer your question directly, <laughs> You should go with an HDTV that supports the video refresh rate used in your country's broadcast television system. Now, some TVs will work with a variety of broadcast systems, and this can be useful if you plan to combine gear from different regions around the world. Or if you accept to be moving around the country from place to place. Totally. Now, I've noticed that I want to say Panasonic is one company that definitely includes multi-world support in most of their models, including mm -hmm. For the power going into the TV, it'll accept a range there as well as accept different broadcast standards and be able to deal with those very nicely. Right. I'm sure other manufacturers are doing it as well, but I'd also be aware too, if you're going to buy an inexpensive TV, it likely won't do that. So that's where it becomes more critical to make sure you're getting one that's designed to operate within your broadcast environment, so to speak. Make sure it works. Yeah. Hey, now it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of February 15, 2011, The Twilight Zone Season 3. Image Entertainment has been releasing this show on Blu-ray one season at a time at two to three month intervals since last fall. Now we're up to season three, originally broadcast in 1961 and 62. All 37 episodes are released on this five disc set with the original 133 to one aspect ratio, an MPEG-4 AVC codec, and an uncompressed LPCM mono track. Extras include the audio commentaries taken from the DVDs, in addition to 19 newly recorded commentaries, 19 radio dramatizations, isolated music scores for every single episode, Rod Serling's promos for next week's show, and bunch more. Next up, Network. Directed by Sidney Lumet, this 1976 classic stars Peter Finch as a news anchor who is exploited by his network for the sake of ratings and brought us the famous line, I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore. It's presented in a 185 to 1 VC1 HD transfer that is a big improvement from the DVD release, according to DVDAuthority.com, as is the original mono audio track. 
The single disc package includes a bunch of extras, though nothing new compared to the DVD. It's got an audio commentary with the director, a multi-part documentary that totals an hour and a half, a 14-minute clip from the talk show Dino with the screenwriter, and an hour-long interview with the director that was originally broadcast on the Turner Classic Movie Network. Also released this week, you will meet a tall, dark stranger. This 2010 Woody Allen film follows two couples, Anthony Hopkins and Gemma Jones, and Naomi Watts and Josh Brolin. This single disc includes a 1080p 178-1 ABC MPEG-4 codec and High Def Digest calls the audio track a three-speaker DTS HD Master Audio 1.0 mix, which is a bit weird, but apparently it's standard for Woody Allen movies since, after all, it's not like he features a lot of explosions in his films. Unfortunately, the extras are non-existent unless you count the trailer for the movie itself and a trailer for Barney's version. Other releases include All the President's Men, 1999's Big Daddy, 1992's Chaplin, Doctor Who, A Christmas Carol, Dungeons and Dragons, Two Movie Collection, Game of Death, Glorious 39, Hoodwinked, Kansas City Confidential, Kites, 1972's Last Tango in Paris, 1987's Moonstruck, 2002's Mr. Deeds, Rain Man, Stag Night, 1946's The Stranger, Top Gear The Complete Season 14, Top Gear The Complete Season 15, Ultimate Jordan Deluxe Limited Edition, and Unstoppable. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Go to Assist Express. If you provide technical support to clients, colleagues, friends, or family, have you found an easy, cost-effective way without being there in person? The best way for me to provide technical support is to do it online with Go to Assist Express. GoToAssist Express lets you view and control another computer online so you can quickly resolve technical issues. I've been able to help friends learn how to use new software and fix family computer problems without being there in person. Techzilla viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For the special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techzilla. That's gotoassist.com slash techzilla for a free trial. Hey, it looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, the Internet Movie Firearms Database. Have you ever wondered exactly which pistol Jason Statham used in Crank? Or <laughs> which other films that featured the same weapon? The Internet Movie Firearms Database has the answer to those burning questions and much more. You can search by movie, weapon, TV, actor, uh, TV show, or video game, and most entries include a ton of screen caps as well. Plus, it's a wiki. So all the content is crowdsourced. So if you fancy yourself a weapons expert or you just want to learn more, check out the Internet Movie Firearms Database. And for everybody that's actually, I'd also like to point out that there's the, the weapon is, is unloaded. Um, totally. Uh, Chev Chelios carried a uh, Springfield XD45. I learned that absolutely nobody has ever used a Glock 21 SF, at least in any uh, movie I have was able to find online. Although a lot of Glocks are used in various TV shows and stuff, but not the 45. Glock 17, Glock 19. Uh, yeah, all the popular ones. And not even the new Gen 4 yet. We'll Moving just put on. these away. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo feels the pain that is bloatware. He says, I have just purchased a notebook and I have one very simple question. Is there an easy tool to help me get rid of the humongous amounts of bloatware that comes with it? Being a Mac guy, I'm really not familiar with this. Thanks, Ricardo in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Ah. I'm still playing with this. I should put it <laughs> Give away. Give me that. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Not playing with anything. <laughs> Ricardo, uh, his software experience with a new PC is among my greatest pet peeves. Uh, basically, lots of unnecessary preloaded software. Now, nothing, nothing beats a clean OS install. And my first choice would be to take the Windows 7 disk, reboot the system, reformat the hard drive, reinstall the operating system. With Windows 7, this should be about 15 minutes to do all of this. And your system will be sparkling. What? You didn't get a Windows system? You didn't get a Windows 7 disk with your new PC? Shame on you! You should always get one of those. Uh, another great option is a sweet piece, oh, a great named piece of software called PC Decrapifier. It comes to the rescue at www.pcdecrapifier.com. This software is designed to work on new PCs running Windows 7, Windows XP, and Windows Vista. Older versions of Windows need not apply. Now, PC Decrapifier removes trialware, toolbars, and annoying gadgets that aren't part of the default OS install. And there's really nothing to install. You just run the application, select which apps to nuke, and go. Simple. 
And uh, like I said, once you're done, there's nothing to uninstall because you never installed the software. It's just a little app you run. Which is pretty nice. Yeah. Almost and better. It's ideal to run that before you do anything else in the system. Like as soon as you took it out of the box, you'd load up Decrapifier, have it strip out all that trialware and bloatware and stuff that you probably don't need or want. Yeah. And uh, help clean up. But, but like I said, nothing beats the, the Windows 7 disk and dropping that in. That's, that's like, I, I would say that's one true advantage OS X has over Windows when you buy it from, like, you know what I mean? You, but you, you buy a PC from a vendor, you're usually like, why is all this stuff on here? And I also realize, too, that, that, that doing a fresh install of Windows on a pre-built system from a major mm -hmm. manufacturer might be a little too much for some people, especially if you're dealing like, oh, what is the, what is the random right. unknown device that was left in the, in the device manager and what driver would go to that? If you're not comfortable with those kind of things, stick with something like Decrapify. Yeah, if you don't know what device PC drivers are and where to find them. Yeah. Use PC to crap a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we do more questions? Yes. Yeah. Hey, which is better, Microsoft Security Essentials or a vast antivirus? That is from a viewer named Danny. Now, we both use Microsoft Security Essentials, but Avast got a four out of five star nod from the folks over at PC Mag in their latest review. Yeah, they're basically, they, they like the new interface changes on that one. Our biggest concern by, actually, we'll add in Veronica and, and Robert and Serafina, our biggest concern for any antivirus, any, any malware tool that you're running is that you update it frequently. Seriously, do yourself a favor, let it auto update because there's nothing like, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to somebody's house, my PC's running slow, and I find out like, well, they had a, you know, antivirus or, or anti spyware or tool installed, they just haven't updated it in two years. Or they let one that was a paid for app or mm -hmm. that trialware app that expired and is right. no longer updating and it's using a definition file from three years ago, effectively useless at that point. Yeah. So, and also, no matter what AV package you go with, even if it's Microsoft Security Essentials, make sure you download it from the developer's website, not some third party site, unless it's a quality shop like download.com or two cows. Right. And Don't be like, oh, I found a random link to this. We bring this up because of Kenneth's email who says, I just watched yesterday's Techzilla podcast where you mentioned Microsoft Security Essentials as the free download of the week. I thought you should know that there is a rogue program out there going by the same name. Apparently, the bad guys are now to the point where they're not afraid of the next step. They actually use Microsoft's trademark name and graphics. Oh. Kenneth, that's a good heads up. So basically, Microsoft Security Essentials, either download it through basically Windows. inside of Windows or... You Windows know, Update is yeah. available through. So that's usually the easiest way to get it. Or you can just go to Microsoft site and grab it there as well. Yeah, do yourself a favor. You know, downloads.com is fine. That's CNET's download site. or some other reputable download sites. Don't, don't take like random links off of forums and the internet and download the, the software there unless you feel you're an expert and you're ready to deal with the consequences. just want some extra excitement in your Windows world. <laughs> Why do these windows keep opening? <laughs> What's going Ponies? on? Ponies? <laughs> what is that pony doing? I don't know. Oh, boy. Hey, here comes another email. It says, hey, guys, uh, I'm visiting the theme parks in Orlando in the summer and need a budget-minded recommendation for a video camera. The flip cam is on the top of my list with its stereo mic, 60 frames per second for chasing around my two-year-old nephew and all the memory and battery I need built in, I think. No zoom, though, and for theme parks, that seems important. Point and shoots and mega zoom cams probably provide the zooming, but probably not the video quality. There's always camcorders like the Canon Vixia HF M300, but I'm not sure if the price difference is worth it, especially when you consider that additional memory and batteries may be needed. Thanks, signed Eduardo in Puerto Rico. Land of the beautiful surf and... Ooh. Yeah, my favorite thing. I used to get the best emails from a friend of mine who lived in Puerto Rico. Um, you probably loved our sub $400 uh, uh, camcorder mini roundup last week. I own Kodak ZI8. Uh, the flip is solid too, but I like being able to pop in more memory cards. Chances are you don't want to carry a notebook around the theme park with you. Cool thing about the flip, it's got a USB dongle built into it. The bad thing about the flip is once it's full, you have to take it to a machine to download the contents. I wouldn't sweat the whole Zoom thing, right? Zoom sounds like a great idea when you're sitting in Best Buy or Costco or wherever you shop on the internet. But without a tripod, the Zoom is just about impossible to use. A monopod is a help, a big help. But I try to avoid zooming using any type of small camcorder as much as possible because you end up with the shaky cam. And the farther you zoom, the worse the shaky cam gets, especially when you're trying to follow a toddler. Steady um, shot. Yeah. You know. 
Well, there's, there's, Hit you or could, miss. I mean, the, the one reason to go to a more expensive camcorder, like you, you mentioned, the Vixia, is if it offers really good low light performance and you expect to be spending a lot of time videotaping indoors, birthday parties, for example, where there isn't a lot of light. It's like a steady shot, a steady shot as a trademark right. term, so it'd be image stabilization. Yeah, you know, if you're outdoors. Less shaky. Yeah. I mean, less shaky cam. If you're outdoors during the day in Florida, Puerto Rico, you should be golden for sunlight. If you want to do a whole bunch of stuff where you're, cam, you're using your camcorder indoors at night, then you might want to start thinking about more. But I got to say that for outdoors video, the those those you know sub two hundred dollar HD camcorders uh, from Flip and Kodak are pretty slick. Nice. Yeah. Let's thank one of our sponsors, Netflix.com. They deliver movies directly to your house. It saves you time, saves you money, saves you hassle. We use Netflix constantly in my house. We're unlimited members. We can watch thousands of TV episodes, movies. Doesn't matter what you want to watch or if you want to watch it over and over again. You can watch it on your PC, your Mac, or right on your TV via Netflix Ready device. Xbox 360, PS3, the Nintendo Wii console, the Roku, the Apple TV, and lots and lots of Blu-ray player and HD TVs are ready to stream content from Netflix. And hey, if you're into the discs, you can get DVDs or Blu-ray by mail in about a single business day. Watch as many movies as you want, anytime that you want, without having to go to that scary red box down the street where all the kids hang out and drink. As a new member and a Techzilla viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla and sign up now. And do us a favor, use netflix.com slash techzilla so that they'll know we sent you and then it'll keep Techzilla rolling to your inbox. Hey, this viewer writes in, hi Techzilla, I'm looking for the best AA or AAA battery charger out there. It has to be able to charge individual batteries, not just in even numbers, like two or four batteries at a time. It has to know if the batteries are fully charged and turn off automatically after charging, and it has to charge pretty fast. And can you also suggest the cheapest that you can find? Thanks, signed Ronald in Los Angeles, California. Um, for simplicity, I usually suggest using the charger that came with your batteries. The speed will vary ridiculously, by the way. Um, a couple different Energizer models I've used vary from like six hours to charge a couple of double A's to two hours to charge a couple of, of double A's. Not because the batteries particularly differently charged, they came out of the same device, but because the, the, the chargers themselves can vary differently in performance. If you want the best, I follow the lead of ham radio enthusiasts, check out PowerX. Uh, at least if you you can figure out how to program it for your particular brand of batteries. You can find lots of info on forums about that or on the corporate website. You can email them mahaenergy.com. They have some really awesome stuff that will charge 1 to 8 uh, AA, AAA, C or D batteries in the Pro lineup. Um, the model are really, really nice models, about 110 bucks is the MHC808M. The consumer stuff focuses on double A's and triple A's. They've got some four spot chargers for like 30, 40 bucks for you uh, if you look online. Figure two hours for charging double A batteries. They can do conditioning too to extend the life. Generally speaking though, for the eight uh, slot chargers, figure 60 to 110 bucks. I had two Energizer battery chargers that came with batteries die. We're talking like 30 bucks with the batteries. So 60 bucks to 110 bucks for years of use sounds really good, especially if you have to use a lot of batteries. And if you need rechargeable D batteries and you think the whole AA and a D cell thing that uh, Energizer and some other rechargeable companies do really sucks, check out Maha's Imedion D cells, 9,500 milliamps each. Ooh. Just remember they're good for a thousand uses when you're looking at that $37 price tag for two of them and that price tag will sting a bit less. In terms of like super bargain, I found it at the back of the flea market chargers. I like to not mess with anything that charges batteries can possibly make the batteries explode and eat my house. So I tend to go with the most reputable company I can find, even if it costs me a bit I mean, more. just totally anecdotal, but I've been using a set of Sony AA rechargers, mm -hmm. and they'll also work the AAA as well. And I'm using the, it basically, I think it comes with four batteries, plus right. the charger was about 25 bucks or so. And I've been using them for years, and I use them in my high drain devices, like a camera I have, mm -hmm. and even my game controllers that require AA's as well, and I have a couple of sets right. of them. And they charge fairly fast, and they have a good milliamp hour rating. I think for the double A's, it's like 2150 or so. So I get good battery life out of it. It exceeds using standard batteries in yeah. any of the devices, especially the higher drain devices too. So, yeah, it's it's amazing. Rechargeables have gotten really really good, and I just I hate throwing batteries. Well, you know, you can recycle them. Technically, they've taken all the dangerous chemicals out, and you can throw them away. I don't recommend that. But I just I've I've just Rechargeables. I moved my whole house to rechargeables. I highly recommend it. Good deal. It costs a lot more over the over the long haul. After our segment on Key Pass a while back, we got a few email <laughs> suggestions, of basically for alternatives, like this one from Craig. After viewing your February eighth episode in which Key Pass was praised, I must put in a good word for LastPass. 
It's the password manager security guru Steve Gibson uses and endorses, which should be all most of us need to hear. Incidentally, LastPass also publishes Android and iPhone apps, so you won't have the potential security risks associated with third-party solutions. Regards, Craig. Hey, Craig, thank you for the good word about LastPass. And my friend Carrie wrote me a glowing mention of her favorite password app, 1Password, that she uses with her Macs and iPhone. And a Windows version for 1Password is now available. I'm enjoying KeePass so far, and I'll check out LastPass and 1Password to see how they compare. Yeah. I actually loaded up one of those third-party apps for my phone just so I could have access to my password list as well. But <laughs> I'm digging some of the features in KeePass. Right. Basically, it, it's encouraging me to use the secure logins and extremely complex passwords. So yeah. well, you don't have to memorize no. like pound pound asterisk LQ four oh. seven pound asterisk star star. But now I realize my, my website has a stronger password than my bank account does. My bank account has kind of a weak password system, I realize, but it's probably good enough. One's more likely to be hacked than the That's other. That's true. Unless I'm in your house. <laughs> and Tad wrote in to say, I found a website that has portable Linux applications. It is portablelinuxapps.org. They put in all the dependencies and such so that it works out of the box. Signed, Tad. Nice. Thank you for the suggestion, Tad. And it looks like they provide a good selection of applications to choose from, too. I was just scrolling down that page going, yes, this is what people need. And of course, because it's Linux, open source, it doesn't cost very much, as in it's just free for you to use. <laughs> Use with Use. credit if you're going to republish that stuff elsewhere. But go look up those rules if you have to. John Wright said, I know how much Patrick hates the logo on the Mac, the big shiny apple that glows in the dark and wakes up my wife. And I kind of have to agree with you, but if you spice it up a bit, it kind of changes everything if you ask me. He's seen some stuff on Etsy, but the really cool one is stuckoff.com. He says, I've never seen anything on the show like this. I thought I would pimp them out a bit, John and Callie. I keep seeing the Snow White holding the apple around the neighborhood in this one coffee shop window. Now I know where it came from. It's awesome. It's I like evil. That. I like the Green Hornet. Take Not those the corporate green. The, green, the green. Did I just say Green Hornet when I went to say Green Lantern? Green Hornets, I Green Lantern. The mm. massive geek air. Techzilla at Revision 3. That's the email address. Facebook.com slash Techzilla. Be our friend. <laughs> and, and do us a favor. Please. Subscribe to our feed at YouTube.com slash TechHD. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Herron. Well, till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Yeah. Give me back my gun. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs>